background on the committee. I went to, unlike most of the public, went to at least 12 meetings. Unlike most of the public, uh, I videotaped and recorded meetings. I'm concerned with the access and the lack of outreach of this committee. The committee was overseen by, and this is a Black Lives Matter committee, whereas Black Lives Matter was the language of 203, which was overseen by Blue Lives Matter a cabal, uh, which included Jamie Bohm, the retired police chief's wife, uh, Mr. Lissy, the deputy, Mr. Myers, the police union rep, uh, Mr. Minahan, the ex-trooper. So four out of six represented the police. Um, and then there was uh, Mr. Richardson whose role is ambiguous to me, but he was the most vociferous uh, proponent to stop any discussion of the language of 203. The language of 203 is in the top two pages. It talks about the history of racism and discrimination by New York State Police. Any conversation on that did not include any of the members of the uh, Blue Lives Matter team. The the number 203 was never in any of the emails, it was never on the website, it was never in the uh, uh, the poll. The major components of 203, the police budget, uh, racism, discrimination, inequality, um, police violence, uh, police involved death, all of that was suppressed both in the meetings and in any outreach. Uh, to the point that when I look back over the 14 hours of video I shot, the members of the Blue Lives Matter contingent would not speak those words. And I'll give you an example. I brought up that I wasn't comfortable with uh, police showing up with loaded guns to a committee that was about stopping and reducing police violence and creating trust. Uh, I was cut off by Ms. Boehm, who changed the subject instantly. Um, when I tried to talk about uh, the, the use of the 203, which is a, it's really a defund the police initiative, um, I was barked down by Mr. Richardson, who three times told me it couldn't be used as a referendum. It couldn't be used to close the police, etc., etc. And yet, 203's language is to unplug part of the police budget and for you guys to produce a honest report to put it back in. Now as far as outreach, uh, three of the six outreach leaders were scared off by showing up at these meetings with, as I say, a wall of police, armed police presence. One was fired, which was me, who did my outreach, which involved five young people, um, and without explanation except a bunch of lies that I had quit um, or that I was told to do things. Um, I believe the reason uh, they went and assaulted my uh, introduction of my poll to the school was because I had a link to Black Lives Matter. I had a link to 203 in its language. Um, my kids wanted to know what's the police budget, wanted to include things like diversity, wanted to include these questions which are at the heart of 203 and which have been banned from discussion and banned from public outreach. So what we've seen through the process is no calendar through this entire process where the public could find what was going on, attend meetings, and get involved until eight meetings in. So these were completely secret meetings. Um, any 12, 12 secret meetings? Well, it's, it's it's funny you say that, Mayor, because at the point where I complained to you on your front lawn and you actually posted passive notification of the meetings, um, on December 8th you promised, Mr. Howe, to post the Zoom meetings, the videos of the meetings, so people could have access and know what was going on. They're still not posted. It's now two and a half months later. So there's no question to me 
that you're implicated in the suppression of 203, the suppression of attendance, the suppression of outreach. So this report, unfortunately, you know, I can I can go I could go to specific video evidence, which I posted on YouTube. Michael Richardson uh, fighting putting in the police budget, a, you know, a major part of the initiative uh, into the poll. Um, there was, you know, no discussion of diversity. Uh, to me, it is a police gutted survey. The goal of this committee from the beginning, these, these five, five of ten, so there was no way, even if you had an activist, and I didn't see any activism, if you, if you had any activist people who wanted to get representation and to do outreach, they were blocked. And, and Mr. Richardson was the most vocal. As I say, I don't know why, but I have, I just posted uh, to YouTube a video, um, Sexist and Racist History of Exclusion Village of Chatham Police Department. Because I had a, an exchange with Mr. Minahan and I brought it to their attention, maybe it's in the report, that for 150 years, no one but white men with guns have gotten these police positions until, as I hear, uh, six years ago when Kevin Bohm uh, resigned. And, and the response of this Blue Lives Matter committee was, we're not looking back, you can't talk about history, uh, you know, we, we don't want people to know about this, was the, the main statement. But I, I go to the language of 203, the language of 203 says, there is a long and painful history in New York State of discrimination and mistreatment of black and African American citizens dating back to the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in America. So in, in the fourth paragraph of 203, they say this is about history. And if we suppress this history, even like the history of the meetings, the videos of the meetings, Mr. Howe, that is, that is a harm to the public. And my concern about this history is by denying these good, well-paid jobs, this uh, social welfare for people with guns, um, you deny the money to African Americans and women, you depress them, you harm them, and, and you, uh, you do a disservice to me because I don't want to be taxed, you know, as they paying for these officers who, in, at least in the village, perform only a ceremonial role. They don't provide me with any services. They, they, they cost me money, but they don't, they don't serve me. And, and to find out that, you know, for 150 years, women and African Americans and, uh, you know, Native Americans, that all these people have been uh, excluded, uh, the only response I got from Mr. Minahan was, you know, prove the negative, Wayne. Tell me, tell me, uh, who's applied that, you know, didn't get the job and should have, who was of color. It's like, that's not my job. It's not even possible. <laughs> I'm not on the board and I'm not, and I can't investigate it. The last thing I'll say is that um, a doctor, a uh, scientist, uh, put together a poll of, based on data from Columbia County, of racial profiling in Columbia County. It shows uh, that six times more African-American people get felony and misdemeanor arrests than the white population. I will post it to my website, We Have Your Kids. Um, you know, it ought to be part of the report. It's a, uh, it's, it's a very intelligently put together analysis. Of course, Columbia County and the police officers and the heads there didn't, you know, didn't do that. They didn't make it available. They didn't create it any more than none of the people on this committee seem to have any problem with the fact that, you know, they couldn't find any evidence that any women or people of color had ever been hired uh, in the police department. So, so I, I, don't, I don't trust the committee not because I have a, you know, any, any objection to a committee that is enforcing and doing outreach for and representing the Black Lives Matter community like me who marched in the street. 
My problems come from a committee that represents where the Blue Lives Matter contingent took a...